was uh, asking us about Sporans, and she was saying, uh, when you're selecting a fur Sporan, which pelts tend to be the most popular or the most historically used, and uh, why are they usually saved for more formal occasions? Why do you tend to wear fur for formal and not day? Uh, price. Um, <laughs> concern with ruining it. Uh, yeah. That's generally where I would go on that. Mm -hmm. The uh, firstborns are traditionally worn. It's it's a practicality thing. Would you wear a tuxedo to the to the mall? <laughs> Adam might, <laughs> um, but no. Generally, you reserve your your better clothes, your more expensive clothes, for formalish or dress kind of functions where they're not yeah. really as much of a chance of getting mud on them, mm -hmm. um, or you know, dirt or schmutz or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's the that's generally why they're reserved for that. Um, and dayborns are you know made of leather. It's you know you spill mm -hmm. something on it, you're fine. Now in terms of historiosity, shall we say, um, where are the most historical furs versus more popular furs now? Um, We've touched on this before, I know, but yeah, I'm, I'm no. curious. Um, historical furs to for a sporn to be made out of. Um, the, number one, it, it has to be seal. Um, seal is the most common fur that's used for sporns in Scotland. It was illegal for five years, <laughs> a few years ago. Um, but seal is a very... Uh, there's a few reasons. Number one, seals are reasonably large animals. So you can get a lot of you know sporns out of a single hide. Two, they're very, very hard wearing. Um, it will look good day one and year 50. It, mm. you know, unless you're wearing it every single day, you know, it's uh, the sides of the sporin uh, on the gusset would rub off over time, but you know, it's much less so with seal just because of how hard wearing they are. Okay. Um, a similar type of fur uh, would be bovine or cow. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a uh, a, a cl well, they, they, they clip the actual hair, um, but it is a, uh, a hard wearing and you know larger skin for the animal, so it's easier to make a lot of sporns out of. Um, the ones that I don't like that are popular as well would be like rabbit, um, mm -hmm. things that shed a lot. Um, right. Rabbit fur, if you ever, uh, to me, this is gonna sound weird, um, Rabbit fur feels kind of like cat, like cat hair, like it sheds a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like you can you can do this and pull a lot of hair off of fur or off of the, the sporn or off of the <laughs> off of a cat or a, or a rabbit if you want to. Um, so I'm less of a fan of rabbit hair because it is not nearly as hard wearing. Mm. Um, badger, fox, yep. uh, musquash are other popular ones. Um, Badger is an old one. Yeah, badger is a, was was very popular back in the 19th century. Yeah, um, I was gonna say um, goat is one that you don't see as often nowadays, but yeah. I think yeah. it's coming back a little bit for people who are looking for something different and kind of retro. But that was a hugely popular uh, pelt for sporns up through the 19th and early 20th century. I think it probably goat probably went away when the sp when the 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 style of sporns came to be a more short hair. Yeah. Um, so it's just basically the outline of the sporin versus horse hair and goat hair sporins were much, much longer, you know, yeah. 12 or 18 inches versus eight or so inches tall. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, badger, would you say that raccoon was a substitute for badger for a while or still yeah. is? Yeah, it's, it's, we are now in a global economy. Right. When, you know, when, when it was, you know, Scotland and your sporin was made of the animals that were in your area, mm -hmm. then it would have been what's in your area. Um, right. Now that it's more, you know, uh, our sporing guy can get furs from Italy or from the Orient or from like all over the world, mm -hmm. um, then you can get more exotic furs. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'd say that, you know, badger, raccoon, you're right, is another one that's kind of very similar. Mm -hmm. um, the, the only thing that I don't like personally about some fox or uh, some badger Definitely raccoon is how puffy it is. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to yeah. say that. Yeah, they get kind like of fluffy. A, the hair's kind of stick out. It becomes you know, yeah. much more, you know, much more, Yeah, much more of a ball <laughs> in your crotch versus an actual spore in shape. I'm not going to pursue that thought any further. Fair but, enough. Uh, Thank you for not doing um, You know what? But but you talk about the um, the, the more exotic stuff. Um, occasionally you'll run into cases where people have taken uh, furs from objects, uh, which because the animals are not hunted anymore, 
but um, like occasionally you'll find a sporn which was made out of tiger pelt, which came off of a tiger skin rug, or you'll find one yep. that's made out of zebra pelt, or something really funky like that. And that that reminds, in turn, that makes me think of the um, the feather sporns, where it's like like grouse uh, feathers or pheasant feathers or owl. I've seen mm -hmm. where instead of fur, you have just like, just layers and layers of, of the feathers. Do you have an opinion on feather sporns? Are they like funky um, fashion, or are they a throwback, or are they the, more trouble than they're worth? Uh, there's a, uh, a spore maker, I believe she's in the north of Scotland, uh, called Kate McPherson. And her claim to fame, or the way she started her company basically, mm -hmm. was making sporns from roadkill. Yep, I was gonna um, say, yeah, roadkill. So yep. she, th there's, I saw a video documentary on her, or, or a news piece or whatever, um, and they basically, they interviewed her and she was like, yeah, you know, I saw, you know, that animal on the side of the road and I thought, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's a shame. It's a beautiful animal. And she, I forget how she ended up making a spore from it, whether she had to tan it herself or whether she took it to somebody to be tanned. Um, but she started her business that way. Mm -hmm. um, and the funny, the funny thing was, she was like, yeah, all of a sudden, all my neighbors are bringing me dead animals that they find on the side of the road. <laughs> saying, hey, can you make a spore for me? thanks. Um, yeah. Thanks, guys. They're like cats bringing you animals and trophies. Putting Sean, go feet. get the mail. <laughs> what do we get today? Oh, it's two skunks and a raccoon, Mom. You know. The, uh, yeah. But she started making uh, uh, bird sporns, so sp sporns from like pheasant okay. or different kinds of, of birds. Um, so I was, was I wrong in thinking that's an old time thing? Is that totally a modern thing then? I don't know if it's an old time thing. I'm huh. not. Okay. I, Maybe it's just hoop I can't tour. see. Yeah, I can't remember, I'm going through my mental Rolodex, I can't remember seeing any photos or old timey, you know, photog like all the McClay prints and that kind of, and the McKeon prints. Yeah, yeah. I can't think no, of any no, no. of them. No, definitely not. With a, with a bird spawn. If it's old, I wouldn't think it would go past like the 1930s. Yeah, and frankly. I can't even think but, of like old yeah. advertising stuff that we've seen from mm -hmm. the 40s and 50s um, with that in it. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to guess. It's more modern. It's a more modern thing. Yeah. Um, I'd be worried about it. I'd be worried that it's too delicate to... To, well, I don't know. Feathers are pretty. Feathers are actually yeah, really we, hardy. Yeah, we we have a couple birds. Um, we have two birds that are our pets, mm -hmm. um, and they're the feathers are reasonably hardy. Um, the problem is a if you rub a feather the wrong way, you're gonna yeah. rip the quills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it'll all forever be kind of like you know pointing out like that. Yeah. Um, or I'd be worried that they would you know come out. I don't know how they're affixed to the sporn. That's a good question um, too. And it know. doesn't. They don't really flex like. A yeah. skin wood. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not a big fan of it. I've seen some, and they kind of. It's one of those things where it looks cool, but I don't know how. I wouldn't want to necessarily own it, but it's. I look at it and go, huh. I can appreciate the time and effort put into making it. I can appreciate the beauty of it, but yeah. it's just not for me. Yeah. It's kind of like how I feel about Guinness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Always back to alcohol. That's yeah, well, you know, I have to disagree with you there because yeah. I, lo I love Guinness. Fair but, enough. Um, yeah, I would say that that would be something you'd have to like keep in a plastic bag all year round and bring out like once a year. Very special occasion thing. Now, in terms of furs that are popular, um, if you want something really, really vintagey looking, then something like badger or bovine would be a good choice. Badger is harder to find. Um, bovine is very hard wearing and, and pretty easy to find, and also more affordable. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say fox is probably the single most popular fancy fur that we sell at least. Um, and in terms of how you choose one, it really is idiosyncratic. I mean, you don't have to worry about the color of the pelt matching your tartan or not matching your tartan unless it's a very bright red fox. Um, but in most cases, you're getting more earth tone <coughs> colors, or if you get a skunk one, it's just black and white. Um, you don't really need to worry about toning with the tartan where a pelt is concerned. Am I correct on that? Is yeah. that pretty much true? Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't. You do, the sporn stands on, stands on its own. Right. Don't worry about the sporn matching your tartan, matching your jacket, mm -hmm. matching your hair on your head. Does not right. matter. Right. Just pick the sporn you like. That's it. But not rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. No rabbit. No, no rabbit for you. 